Adele lost a bunch of weight. She looks phenomenal, and as someone that has lost 100 pounds myself, I know what goes into that. Okay, she mentioned the CERT food diet, and that got a lot of people kind of blowing it out of proportion, talking about that Adele lost all this weight because she did the CERT food diet, and the CERT food diet just exploded in popularity. So I wanna explain a little bit about the CERT food diet, and wanna explain why there's some really important caveats that you need to be paying attention to. There's also some merit, so I'm not here to completely discredit it or discredit Adele's success. I'm here to give you the biochemistry. Let's break it down. Today's video sponsor is Thrive Market, an online membership-based grocery store. They allow me to do the content that I want to do, and they are an awesome place for you to go online and find specific foods for whatever kind of eating style you're doing. If you're doing paleo, if you're fasting, if you're doing keto, if you're vegan, you can just select what kind of program you're eating by, and then it just organizes different food options for you, whether it's baked goods, whether it's snacks, whatever, and then it just gets delivered right to your doorstep. So it's how I stock my pantry. It's changed the game for me, and they are an awesome supporter on this channel that allows us to do what we do. So if you use that link down below, you can save 25% off your first order, plus get a free gift. So that link is down below in the description. Now let's rock. So the CERT food diet claims to be all about activating sirtuins. Okay, sirtuins are these signaling proteins, and they're heavily researched, heavily researched mainly in mice, but it's starting to come over into the world of humans. Now, Dr. David Sinclair has done a lot of work in the world of sirtuins. There's a lot of published research, and I'm not saying sirtuins don't work. Like, sirtuins are powerful. When sirtuins are activated, they can potentially activate FOXO3, which is a prolongevity gene. They can potentially activate PGC1A, which can improve our mitochondrial mass and mitochondrial density. What that means is, yes, activating sirtuins can have some very powerful benefits. And I've done videos, like multiple videos, talking about that, which I think gives me a little bit of clout to talk about this as somewhat of an expert, right? So the CERT food diet claims that you eat specific foods that activate sirtuins. So even eating things like kale, eating things like certain berries, eat, uh, drinking red wine, things like that. Okay, yes, they potentially could activate sirtuins, but when you actually look at the data, the foods that the CERT food diet suggests you consume, there's no clinical evidence whatsoever that they're activating sirtuins. Okay, they're playing along the fact that there's specific compounds or maybe antioxidants that could activate sirtuins. The only one, and I'm not gonna list all the foods that are in there, it would take forever, but they mention red wine because of the resveratrol. That makes sense, okay? resveratrol in red wine. Resveratrol has been demonstrated in some rodent studies to be something that activates sirtuins. However, the amount of red wine you would have to consume to get that sirtuin activation that would be of any benefit would be pretty hefty, right? You would have to be consuming a lot. So that's not the real focus there. Now, there is some evidence that sirtuins and the metabolism have a lot of interplay. Okay, there was a study that was published in the journal Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Okay, this was an awesome one. It took a look at subjects that had lost weight over the course of a year. They took obese people and they had them go on an aggressive weight loss for a year. They found at the end of that one year mark, their sirtuin levels, uh, mainly CERT1, 3, and 7, had increased, indicating that there's a potential correlation with weight loss and sirtuin increases, but not the other way around not the fact that increasing sirtuins promotes weight loss. There is some evidence with that. And again, from a biochemical standpoint and a molecular standpoint, if we activate sirtuins, then yes, we can potentially activate PGC1A. We can potentially activate more mitochondrial mass or have more mitochondrial mass, which gives us more energy factories to burn fat. So I'm not saying it's not possible, but here's the big thing. You're probably thinking, okay then, Adele says she did this and she lost a ton of weight. Okay, Adele probably lost weight because the foods that induce sirtuin activation are also very calorically sparse. They're not calorically dense. They're lower calorie foods. But there's a huge caveat, and I hope that you've stuck with me through this video because this is the biggest piece. Sirtuins cannot do their job, I repeat, Sirtuins cannot do their job unless there is NAD available, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. Okay, NAD 
is imperative for survival. If we didn't have it, we would be dead within 15 seconds. Okay, it fuels every essential transaction within our body. So sirtuins are like a drill. They have the ability to be a tool and activate all kinds of different potential things. They may potentially improve FOXO3. They may have an effect on PGC1A. Okay, they may have an effect on all kinds of different things that factor in with our metabolism. But it's a drill that doesn't have a battery pack. What good is having a tool that can do all these things if it can't hold a charge? NAD is the charge. It's the battery pack. So what do I mean by this? Well, there's very few ways that you can really increase NAD. So when this diet says that you eat these foods and activate sirtuins, even hypothetically, if you could activate those sirtuins by eating these specific foods, if you were not in a caloric deficit, or if you were not activating or creating more NAD, it would not matter. So you get where I'm going with this, right? What's the best way to activate NAD? The best way to activate NAD is caloric restriction or fasting or energy scarcity in general. That's the best way to increase NAD. Dr. David Sinclair's work has demonstrated that through and through, that fasting caloric restriction frees up NAD to become available to do other things, like activate sirtuins and be a battery pack for sirtuins. So I'm not saying that Adele's diet did not work. I'm saying that Adele's diet worked because in order for the sirtuins to ever do their job in the first place, she had to be in an energy deficit. Okay, and this is the fasting guy, this is the keto guy, this is the guy that talks about carb insulin model saying this. And I'm still suggesting that calories played a huge role in why she had success. So did those foods activate sirtuins? Who knows, right? There's no clinical evidence that suggests one way or the other. So we can't say that they do or don't. We could kind of like cherry pick little pieces and kind of plug and play. But even if they could, if she was not in a caloric deficit, activating, activating the sirtuins with NAD, that wouldn't have done its job in the first place. So the bottom line is she did a phenomenal job. And if eating these foods gave her the motivation to follow something and do something right and eat foods that are antioxidant rich and eat foods that are good, I'm not raining on that whatsoever. But please, for the love of all things good, do not go do the cert food diet because you think it's going to be a magic pill with these specific foods that are going to activate sirtuins, make you younger, and make you magically burn fat. It does not work like that. There's a molecular situation to everything. And when you drive into it and you really look at it, you see the light of what's happening. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.